later. Now we have the Campus Sports Buzz and an interesting interview from a fitness instructor of Philadelphia, the owner of the 76ers. What's his name? Can I hear it? A little bit louder there? <gasps> That's right, kids. Pat Croce. We'll be right back. So, basically, how you doing, Pat? Doing good? I feel great. Yeah, do? I feel great, and it's playoffs around the yeah, corner, so no. this is really exciting That's right great. now. That's great. But how's, first of all, how's the leg? You know? The leg's coming. The leg's leg is, uh, what I can control, it's 100% mm -hmm. because I'm building yeah. the muscle back, building the range of motion back. What the big man upstairs can control, that's got a ways to go. The doctor thinks it'll take about six more months for the bone fractures to wow. heal. Unfortunately, I can't do certain things. Steps yeah. are a little difficult. Yeah. I can't run. I, I can't that. take my normal gait pattern, which is really aggressive. But yeah. I can do the Stairmaster. I bike. I do squats. I haven't bent the screws yet. Yeah. So it's coming. I see you're off the crutches. Off the crutches off as the crutches, of the new millennium. Good. Yeah, that's That good. was my goal. That was well, good. first it was to start the season without crutches. That yeah. was truly yeah. my goal, but I couldn't yeah. achieve that the goal. The man upstairs so. wasn't ready for it. I said, no, 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 chill. Yeah. Chill. Yeah, that's good. I noticed after seeing you all the time and seeing you around on TV doing interviews, you're always so positive. And how do you relinquish the negative energy that you have from being, having a bad day or a setback into positive, being always positive all the time? Well, you know, it's a state of mind, Frank. And yeah. I have a very optimistic, positive state of mind. And do I start every day like this? Yeah, yeah it's going to be a great day. That's really what I yeah. do. I get my mind set for the day. When you get excited about the day, the day becomes exciting. Yeah. Most people get up and say, oh, shh. <laughs> and then, you know, the, the day yeah. stinks. And, no, man, I get excited. You know, I know what I have today, ending with a game tonight, but I got this interview. There yeah. are a bunch of good things I have. Yeah. Now, do I have setbacks and pitfalls and yeah. obstacles and ugliness with Allen Iverson and coach fighting? <laughs> or something? Yeah. Yes. But yeah. the idea then is to tackle those problems and make them opportunities. But I don't go at it with a negative attitude because you know how sometimes you say, I don't feel so good, yeah. and you feel worse? Exactly. Well, yeah. if I don't feel so good, I'll say, I'll get better quick. I'm going to yeah. get this. I'll get over this. I'll jump on a bike, or I'll take some vitamin C. or yeah. I'll... But no, uh, you know, I think what I do is, luckily, I've been blessed with good DNA. Yeah. My mom was a very positive, optimistic person. Yeah. My dad was a tough, tough Italian. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, if I did something I wrong, whack. Yeah. And that was always because I wanted to have fun. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to have a great day. But, yeah. you know, I, and I do have bad days. Do I have bad times? I do get tired. But... Mm -hmm. I try not to let anyone see it because no one cares about that. Yeah, no, but you know what? I'm rarely, rarely, rarely in a bad mood. Very rarely. You know, I don't like arrogance. I don't like ignorance. I don't like prejudice. Yeah. That would put me in a bad put mood if bad someone mood. are like that. Yeah. Then I just want to, <laughs> if you don't like the way you're feeling, then change the way you're thinking. Yeah, that's it's true. It's as simple as that. That's true. That's true. And I hate when we lose. Yeah. I mean, I, no one sees yeah. me after we lose. I see I think, you, sometimes oh. when I'm here at the games, I see you up yelling and screaming. You're like the My most energetic person like in the box yeah. up there. You're I think just, ESPN likes that too. Yeah, right? they do. I, mean, I, I see I, ESPN, I wear yeah. my heart on my sleeve. So yeah, I'm psyched when we're yeah. doing great and I'm bummed when we're doing lousy. And I can't control the last act of the play. Yeah. Like tonight, we can pack this house, yeah. fill it, have a great show. But if we lose the game on two missed free throws, what can yeah, I do? Exactly. But everyone leaves like, oh, and I don't yeah. want, I want everyone leaving juiced. Yeah. And luckily we have a, a home game run right now yeah, with six games straight, time. so it's pretty cool. Yep. yep. I noticed uh, a few weeks ago Larry Brown and Alan Iverson were having some problems with, their, uh, with Alan showing up on time at practices and Alan wanted to do what Alan wants to do. How is their relationship going right now exactly? You know, are they still going through some problems and explain exactly what they're um, status is now as far as, you know, Alan showing up on practice on time and exactly how he is doing, how the relationship is. It's going right They're now. Going it's going better. pretty cool. Yeah, going yeah, you know what? They're, imagine you have a 59-year-old white man and a 24-year-old black man. Yeah. One wears Armani, the other wears tattoos. <laughs> one <laughs> knows the world of basketball, true. one knows the streets of basketball. But they both have common goals, which are to win. Yeah. And it's my job to help let them know that we want to respect each other, we want to learn from each other, we want to win with each other, and it's working. It's a communication thing. Larry Brown is a great motivator, a fabulous coach. Yes, yes. Allen Iverson knows he has tremendous talent, and he knows deep down inside on a quiet day that he needs Coach Larry Brown. Yeah. But every once in a while, he, he falls back point. into his uh, street court rut, and he doesn't, he doesn't want to get up for practice. You know, that pillow feels too comfortable. And Larry Brown has a right to be angry then. And then Allen, on his defensive mode, starts getting angry because the coach yells at him for being... 
But it's, it's, you know, it's like any family. Uh -huh. If you communicate the problems out, you can find a solution. If you hold them in, then it turns into a boiling pot of steam and it doesn't work. And it's my job to make sure that that pot doesn't boil. How did Pat get involved with the Sixers? I hear you started out as Flyers trainer, I believe. Condition coach. Condition, okay. I'm a physical therapist by trade, but I had the best of both worlds. Okay. I had a degree in physical therapy and a degree in athletic training, and I meshed them together, which was rare in the early in the mid '70s. And I was a conditioning coach and physical therapist for the Philadelphia Flyers, and then in 1984 for the 76ers. So the relationship that I developed in 1984 with the then owner Harold Katz over 10 years is what got me here today. Because if I didn't know Harold Katz or he didn't know me, there's no way he would have met with me and listen to my crazy offer to buy part of the team, then to buy the whole team. But it was because relationships determine results. That's important to know. The relationships that you develop in the world, from college to family to neighborhood to business, they're the things that you work for. I'm, a, I'm great at collecting friendships and relationships. You, don't, you know the old saying, you don't burn any bridges? I mean, that's so important because that relationship with Harold Katz allowed me to have a lunch with him and although he rejected me at the time, and the next 49 times, there was one time he said, yes, and that's where I capitalized. Wow. So this was back, what, 1984 you took over, or when, when was it? Well, 1984 is when I started as the physical conditioning okay, coach, gotcha. but it was 1995 when I had my right. first meeting with him okay. in November, a lunch meeting. It was 1996, March wow. of 1996, where we did the deal. So, and it was then the following year for the next four seasons is when I took over as president. Now, if I didn't get the deal, if doing the deal, I wanted to be president, so I took the deal to Comcast because I needed some big bucks. Yeah. I had some money, but not. Yeah, didn't you have like a fitness chain or something like that, or you were sports involved? medicine? It sports was medicine? really physical therapy centers. Okay. They ranged anywhere from twenty five hundred square feet to ten thousand square feet, and I had forty of them in eleven okay. states. And I hired physical therapists, athletic trainers, exercise physiologists. I had a great team, nice. about yeah. five hundred and twenty five employees. We did some element of fitness, but we called it a medical fitness program because it wasn't where you paid at dues. This was 12 weeks and you're ours. We have your telemetry monitored and it would be for someone like your folks who wanted to lose weight but safely so they didn't want to die. Yeah. So, but it was pretty cool. Yeah. You don't have them anymore? You no, I sold, them, sold them, all, them all. Some yeah. of the money I used to get into this venture, but yeah. no, I sold in 1993 to a company called Novacare. Oh. I fulfilled a two-year employment contract, but after two years, the thick corporate world was not for me. I'm not into going into meetings for meeting's sake. I'm not into wearing ties. Nah. So yeah. after two years, I said, adios, amigos, and then I didn't know what I wanted to be. And that's when I had meetings with a variety of people. One of them was Harold Katz. And although, again, the advance was rejected, it didn't stop me. Basically just kept bugging at it. I and kept calling. I found reasons. Well, I didn't stop because when I asked him if he wanted to buy, sell 10% of the team, let me buy 10% of the team. I'll infuse culture and team esprit, my business philosophies. I'll get the community involved in the team and the team back into the community. And he said, no, Pat, when I sell, it will be all or nothing. Now, what is your involvement in bringing the Republican National Convention to Philadelphia? Volunteer chairperson. Volunteer chairperson. And what that okay. means is they asked me, the city of Philadelphia asked me, because they needed 10,000 volunteers to help make this event a success. Okay. Now, whether you're Republican or Democrat, it doesn't matter because it really is a city of Philadelphia thing because it's right here in the city. And so we want volunteers from all persuasions, from every walk of life, who want to have some fun, who want to take a little bit of history, enjoy it, because the last time I think the Republican National Convention was in Philadelphia was in 1948. And thirdly, you want to instill some pride. Same thing I'm trying to do with Sixers and Sixers fans, you know, bring that pride back. It's with this, with this event here in Philadelphia, People are going to be coming from all over the world. The eyes of the world are going to be located right here in Philadelphia. And here's a great way to say, we love it here. This is pretty cool. Whether you're in college, senior, doesn't matter. Now, what kind of jobs are they, you know, as far as volunteering, what can they do as far as kids coming out and helping out with, with their jobs? And that's a great question, Frank, because they can be greeters and meters at the airport, at the train station. They can be liaisons with the 15,000 press from all over the world. They can work in hotel lobbies and stuff, uh, you know, bags or help with the public relations. Uh, they're certain if you can speak different languages or you have driving capabilities, you can be escorts. You can escort so these big people around the town and stuff. Yeah, they they're really all little caucuses from yeah. all the, de the delegates. And I'm not a political animal myself. I really have yeah. nothing to do with it other than it's Philadelphia. That's yeah. the only reason. Yeah. 
Now, how will these um, people go about getting involved in this? How can, where can they go? They can go online at www.philadelphia2000.org, or there's a phone number, which I'm not sure. I think it's I think it's 215-686, and the only reason I remember it is 0352, Iverson Geiger. Oh, there you 0352, and I think you can get an application through that number. But check it out first. You yeah, better don't, check don't it just quote, to make sure. I don't, don't give a, you know, I don't want to be given a number at uh, yeah. Joe and Schmo's <laughs> restaurant. Yeah, that's true. Okay, well, thanks for the interview, Pat. Frank, my pleasure. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you.